Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. It's more Vikings. Which one, Dan? This is episode 14 in the uncertain hour before the morning. That's a heck of a title. Yes, it is. Sheesh. <laughs> Previously, Ragnar and Ivor have m survived, and Lagertha has attacked Kattegat and won the battle. Yes. Let's see what happens the rest of the way here, guys. Skull, fam. Skull, Dan. Skull, Joe. Ashley, you gonna come out and fight? Don't look like it. Nothing would make Lagatha happier. How strange, Lagatha, that you should play the usurper. Now, there's never the usurper. Always the usurped. Uh-huh. Yeah, fair enough. You took my husband, my world, and my happiness. I didn't take your husband. He chose to be with me. He didn't choose. You bewitched him. Mm. In any case, Ragnar is dead. In my dream, his boats were sunk in a storm. But you don't know that. Why would you want that anyway? Yeah. I've dreamed of taking back my home. But if I have to fight for it, then I will. Don't worry, I could never fight you, Lagatha. I would never win. And that's why you suck. Oh, that just shames you in front of everybody. All I ask is that you let me leave here in peace and my sons be grateful for the manner of it and not seek revenge. If you're gonna leave, do it. She doesn't need you to relinquish things. She's won this place. I say it's hers regardless. You're in no position to ask anything. Yeah. <gasps> she did it. <laughs> well. Agatha, I don't, I don't think I agree with that. But I mean, yeah, that, that was personal. Very much so. Prince Wolf, we may have captured him. For the love of God, do you not know who this is? <laughs> it's Ragnar Lothbrok, the king of the Northmen. Seize him! Oh my God, he's here willingly, douchebag. <laughs> that was unnecessary. <laughs> really? Big man beating up an ar uh, unarmed man? Unarmed man, yeah. If Ivor survives this man, he's going to take vengeance just for this. Mm-hmm. No respect for his father. I don't like you. Oh, that make you feel good? Where is my son? Don't worry about him. If it were up to me. Where is your father? I'm not talking to you. I want to talk to the decision maker around here. That's right. You're not the king here. You're a petty child. I know you're not going to sacrifice this horse. Oh. I think they did. Are those like a, a scarce thing right now in their country? Well, they're not exactly known for their cavalry anyways. Well, they won't be now. We had one horse in all the swing and you just <laughs> killed it. That's right. This is a funeral. Everybody's happy about this one. Oh, wait. This is just how they do that. I say they just celebrate everybody. She was a queen. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she gets the godfather's funeral. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Poor horse. Like, I didn't ask for this. <laughs> I have to give them credit. They have a very pretty send-off here. Yeah. I've always enjoyed them as much as I've hated seeing it happen. At least they're showing her respect after they came in there and took her, took everything from her. Yeah. Welcome home, though, Lagertha. Been a long time coming. All hail Queen Lagertha. All hail Queen Lagertha. My lord. Father, I have news. Where is he? What have you done with him? <laughs> <laughs> yes, what are you doing with my good friend? You know what? Aethelwolf gets to do things like this after Dad's kind of screwed his wife, so... <laughs> what took you so long? <laughs> He's gonna keep him in the cage while I talk. <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> I'd be a little more respectful than that. <laughs> right. <laughs> he looks like he's being taken care of. Yeah, he's fine. I will not eat until my son does. Your son is also my guest. Okay. Make sure he's well kept. Sorry. Hey, man, he's still eating. I guess he can take it with him. Okay. <laughs> Give him a doggy bag. I just got to practice him. What did he say? He said thank you. <laughs> yeah. 
It was wrong of my son to slaughter all your farmers and their families. At your order. Mm -hmm. This is your son, Magnus. No, that's not. <laughs> How do you know? I swear that's not. <laughs> my mother told me so much about you. She told me I was like you. Everything about my life makes sense now. Your birth was a miracle. <laughs> because I never had sex with your mother. All she ever did was piss on me. <laughs> I'll tell you what. This would make a hell of an episode of Maury. Oh, God. You are not. <laughs> Why have you taken so long to return? It's part of a larger and bolder strategy. Maybe so. When the man's in a cage, what, is, what larger strategy does he have? Oh, boys. Welcome to your former home. Yeah. Where's the mother? She's dead, Ube. I killed her. Why? She took her to get away from me. I wanted it back. Wouldn't do it. Ube. You're an idiot. <laughs> I applaud your bravery, Uba, but this ain't gonna end well. This, you're surrounded. And clearly, Lagatha doesn't want to kill you. Right. She had every reason to. Yeah. You like power, don't you? I only like it because it allows me to do good things. Only good things. Yes. I thought you came in search of good farming lands and that you wanted to find some way that our peoples could mutually benefit. By killing all of my people, that was mutually beneficial. To be fair, Ragnar, you did kill all of their people first when you first came here. Let's go to the Great Hall and let's finish off. She never loved us, she only loved Eifer. Oh yeah, and Harbard. Yes, she loved Harbard, all right. Well, he's bitter about that, isn't he? Mm-hmm. I understand his resentment. He probably didn't get as much love as the other boys. Right. Both our parents may be dead. Our father isn't dead, do they? Ragnar Lothric can't die. I don't know about that. Metaphorically speaking, maybe not. For the people outside of this villa, you are the most dangerous man on this earth. They're all mortally terrified of you. Isn't that what power is? Having people fear you? Imagine being locked in a cage like that. It's too short for you. <laughs> yeah, he's no threat to you right now. No. You have to kill me. The seer told me that I am fated to die the day the blind man sees me. The blind man? Okay. You Vikings are incorrigible. You emerge from the womb with only one thing on your mind. How to die. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Magnus, it's time for you to leave and become a man. What? <laughs> Here's some food for your journey. Jeez. You can't make me go, please. I'm happy I won't go. You start walking or you're going to die. Holy shit. Go. <laughs> wow. Well, now he's no longer Ragnar's son. He's of no value to them. Poor kid. All he's known is life with them, and now they just toss him to the woods. Yeah. Eckbert, you and your son are horrible people. They really are. What if your God does not exist? Then nothing has meaning. Or well, everything has meaning. What on earth does that mean? <laughs> you only think of Valhalla, and all you think about is heaven. Which seems like a ridiculous place. <laughs> Dead warriors get to fight again in the courtyard and kill each other, and then they all have supper. <laughs> they are both ridiculous. Yes. Yes, okay. Most honest conversation on religion ever. <laughs> I love this. Athelstan was a man of God. Tell me what happened. Floki killed him. So your gods killed him? No, Floki killed him out of jealousy. That's right. Mm hmm. So leave the gods out of this. If he stayed here with me, he'd still be alive. He had enemies here also. He belonged here with me. I would have protected him. Who are you to say where he belonged? Ethelwolf probably would have killed him. 
They both loved him. I hate I hate that they lost their friend. Mm -hmm. Astrid's just in there. I am Astrid. Forgive me, but I am afraid that we... Yes, you should be afraid. That is what I came to tell you. Why are you being weird about it then? If you touch your hair on Lagatha's head, you are a dead man. Do you really think that if I am not afraid of Lagatha, then I would be afraid of you? You should be afraid of both. They did take your home. Oh. Is that uh, Alfred? Did he know that Aethelwolf had a son? Or that Athelstan had a son? I don't think he did. This is my son, Alfred. You are Athelstan's son. Oh, but that's got to mean the world to... Ragnar. Just a part of Athelstan is still alive. Yeah. It just occurred to me, Ragnar's time is coming to an end. It's gotta be. I think he's known this for some time, too. I think he's ready. I'm not ready. I cannot kill you. The world demands it, but uh, I cannot kill you. Then hand me over to King Ayla. My friend, I'd rather set you free. He wouldn't do it quick. My sons know that I've come to Wessex to see you. What do you think they'll do once they hear of my death? They will rip the lungs out of all of you. Mm. Let my crippled son Ivar go home. He is obviously no threat to you. Oh yes, he is. <laughs> I will tell my son Ivar to tell his brothers that you did everything you could. That you and I, we are sworn friends. I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> that way, when my sons come back, and they will, they will spare you. And they will take out all of their revenge on King Ayla. Ayla takes the fall. Oh, yeah. And then England's yours. He's asking you to do this, man. Like you said, Ragnar has to die. This will be a his way. Don't be afraid. Things are getting interesting. In this regard, a little too interesting for my taste. Mm. But I think it's sealed. We'll start from the beginning, fam, here. Lagatha has killed Auslug and taken her town back. And now she's queen. And she spared her sons. And now they're very bitter about this. And I can't say I blame them because they were deceived here. But she had nothing against them, as she said. It was not your fault that, that Ragnar was bewitched in her mind. I mean, that's the thing, you know. Ragnar has for the longest time been favored by the gods. She knew about the prophecy that he would have many sons. As Oslog said, she fulfilled her part of the prophecy by giving him those sons. So really, she can't turn against Ragnar's sons because then she's basically turning against the gods in a way. And I think she made the right choice there by leaving them alone. It's a risky choice. You know, they obviously could come back and want to seek revenge against her. And of course, you know, being sons of the legitimate queen, they have a claim to the throne. But I think I think she ultimately made the right choice of just taking out Oslog. I think he kind of pointed out it was kind of you didn't agree with the way that she did it, shooting her from behind. No, I did not. But I kind of feel like, you know, it's probably a fitting death for her. You know what? For for what it meant for Lagertha, yeah, because this was a stab in the back for Lagertha. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, very very uh, poetic justice there, in a sense. So. And the thing is, too, I, I didn't really like Oslog as a character. I always felt like she's a little bit too pretentious. She's a little bit too um, too much like a noble. Yeah. Right? She, she, not much, not much of what you consider a proper Viking. She doesn't have that warrior spirit to her. She doesn't really fit in with a lot of the other characters in the show. How did that happen? How did she, how is she like this and nobody else that we've met is anything like that at all? Beats for me. Vikings, you know? Beats me. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying there's other characters who are kind of like her, but as far as Viking culture though, she's not, she doesn't really believe in any of that stuff. No, I mean, she... yeah, she's, she buys into the prophecies and she buys into the traditions, but you know, as far as living it, she doesn't really doesn't really fit in with everyone else. Incredible circumstances for her there. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to explain. And I'm sitting there looking at the kids, you know, after they, after they find out about their mother's death, and uh, they go and they confront Lagertha, they wake up the next day and like, man, the one kid's like, I don't, I don't really want to fight Lagertha, you know? I, I never really cared for my mother, you know? She really wasn't a good leader. And I think that's, I think Lagertha was aware of that. I think she realized that there wasn't a whole lot of love there in that family. And that's one more reason, too, why she felt it wasn't necessary to kill the kids. Yeah, but there is one, definitely, at least one, that she should be very much on guard with. Mm -hmm. That's Ivor. When he finds out about this, 
I think this is going to change him big time. I think he's going to have nothing but knives for Lagatha for the rest of his life on this. And there'd be no getting away from that for her. That's it. That's at least the way I feel about this. But the other thing for me, you had mentioned the fact that if uh, that if she did harm these children, mm -hmm. it would be like an offense against the gods. For her, it would be. But Astrid came in and said, she won't do it, but we will certainly harm you, you know? Right. If you try to harm her, because... Lagatha's got love of people, love from the people. They love her. Oh yeah. The Katagat loves her. This is her together. people. Yeah. yeah. I'm, they they're probably ecstatic that she's back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's like old times again. I say she's a very traditional type of Viking leader, right? Yeah. She's out there on the front lines with her men. She's got the skills. She's got the reputation. She's a little fancier now, but you know that just comes with the territory. Right. I mean, you know, she's been an earl, so she knows she knows the process. Yeah, and people are going to trust her a lot more than they are than they are Oslog because she really does fit in with everyone. Certainly. She, she's a woman of the people. Oslog is definitely not. So yeah. I think that's going to play into Lagatha's favor with you know in terms with Katagat for that matter. Mm -hmm. but, I don't know. I'll be interested to see kind of what the future looks like here because now we're reaching we're reaching into some uh, prophecies here. I don't know how much Eyebrow's really going to care. I mean, you're right in the sense that, you know, she did baby him a lot. But I also see that Ivar has a lot of respect for his father. And I wonder if he's not going to come with this from the ang same angle that Lagertha is. It's like, you were wife of Ragnar Lothbrok. You're still a person of, you know, honor and respect. I don't know, man. Because from the looks of things here, Ivar's, Ivar and all these children are about to lose two parents. So, like, you've already lost one. And it looks like, looks like you're about to lose a second. Mm -hmm. So, I feel like... Considering that Ivor is closest to what happened to, to his father here, I think there's going to be some bitterness with him there because he wasn't there to save his mother. Ivor's a loose cannon to me, so... Some of the characters... Calculated loose cannon, but still. Right, some of the characters in the show, it seems like their motivations change all the time. You really can't be sure what they're going to think. Because I'm sitting here looking at, um, what's her name, Wolf's wife. Like, yeah, it's nice to meet you again, Ragnar. Like, really? Because the last time I was here, I killed a bunch of you people. <laughs> Yeah, we're still old friends, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's been 10 years. I think everybody's just kind of... It's kind of just like that last meet and greet before everybody before people die here, so... Right. But let, moving on into that mm -hmm. there, we finally met Magnus here, a little bit more grown up, being certainly well-fed, taken care of, living in nice hospitality of the of the of of King Eckbert here. Mm -hmm. It looked like he was receiving a nice education, a little bit of finery. Yeah. But ultimately, he's been a hostage this entire time. Right. And certainly being raised a Christian, I would I would no doubt wager. Mm -hmm. And then when Ragnar breaks the news and says, yeah, you're not my son. All your mom did is piss on me. Yeah. That had to have pissed them right off. <laughs> right, because, you know, you're sitting here thinking, well, you know, if Ragnar comes back, I have a hostage because we know how much Ragnar loves his sons. No, here's another son that he didn't know about. And then suddenly he's he's worthless to them because he's not Ragnar's son. And when they kicked him out just suddenly like that, that that broke my heart for poor Magnus because it's like, man, you had, you're had you just a victim in all this. Hey, this you kid's know? lived in a court his whole life. He has no idea how to survive outside those walls. You just threw him to the wolves. Literally. Yeah, man. He, I mean, for me, it's like, man, you're just as good as dead out there. And he probably will be, unless one of the other kids finds him and says, oh, we'll, we'll accept you as a son of Ragnar, even if you're not. Yeah, right. Because they wouldn't know. And they had some interesting uh, conversations, Eckbert and Ragnar, here. Mm -hmm. Like, these are some of the better dialogues between those two that I think we've had. I always love the, the dialogue between yeah. these two, though, because they're both really intelligent people. They are, and they have really good, like, rebuttals to one another. Mm-hmm. Like, each, each has their own idea of what they think is right and wrong, and their rebuttals are incredible. But one of them, one of them's viewpoint on the world changed, and it's Ragnar. His viewpoint on faith and the world, it all completely changed. You know, it's like, you can't argue, you know, all the, all the things about faith now with him anymore, because to him, that doesn't exist. Right. You know, it's like he questions every every bit of it. Yeah, he thinks, he thinks the idea of what Vikings go to is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. He thinks that... The idea of like heaven where everybody's just happy up there is a ridiculous thing now. So, what is what does he care? It's it's really incredible how his experiences have changed his view of the world. Yeah. Because from the beginning, his whole thing is, you know, I'm a descendant of Odin. You know, I'm I'm going to go out here and I'm going to fulfill the the old Viking traditions. I'm going to attend all the ceremonies. I'm going to make all the sacrifices. I'm going to live a proper Viking life. He was devout at one point. Yeah. yeah. And then as he gets introduced to Christianity, he's like, well, hey, what's this all about? You know, I get, met this guy, Athelstan. He's a really smart guy, kind of like me. You know, is there something to his faith? I don't know, because they have all these riches. It seems like there's no, some value to it. And then now he's at the point where, like, you know, I've, I've tried to appeal to both sides, 
and it seems like, you know, I'm just a nobody now. My people don't like me. I have nothing to my name. I'm sitting here just waiting for death. That, and you know what? That is interesting, how his experiences have shaped things, because he's been baptized for both sides there, mm -hmm. right? He's been baptized a true Viking. I've been claimed as Odin's son. He's also been baptized a Christian. And, you know, it's like, man, what are what are either gods going to do for me here? It's like, is there anything that he's probably questioned himself in that 10 years? It's like that he's been gone. Right. It's like, has either one of them actually done anything for me? You know? And it's like, no. Well, then what's the point of any of this? Yeah, because when he, when he was a devout Viking, you know, he lost a daughter. He lost a home. It, he barely nearly died. And, you know, so he's like, okay, well, what if I try the Christianity thing? Well, nobody likes Christians. You know, they won't respect you as a leader if you're a Christian. And, and, like, and like, even the other Christians treated him that way. Yeah. Because we saw him, you know, go to England. Like, yeah, I'll convert to Christianity if it means we can have a, an alliance and, you know, friendly relations with the other Christians. They still killed y'all. They didn't care. But it was interesting, too, because they both had visions of, Athel of Athelstan. Mm hmm You know, when after Athelstan was dead. It's like you saw you saw visions of him in the afterlife, and that did nothing to sway your to sway your beliefs one way or another, or maybe not sway him one way or another. But it's like you both saw him. Yeah. You know how how does this not like provide you any evidence that there's something greater? I guess in in their in their world. Well, I think it could be too that you know he was really more a man of faith than either one of them were. True. You know because we've seen Eckbert. Eckbert made makes no pretension about being a devout guy. He's out there, you know, sleeping with his son's wife and betraying his allies and everything else. Well, he's not even trying to, to live a life free of sin. Mm-hmm. You know, he just, he just asks forgiveness for living it. So. Right. And it's one of those things, well, and, you know, I love the point of the argument there where, you know, Egbert's saying, you know, you guys are worried all about death. I'm worried about life, you know. Yes, I'm going to die one day, but, you know, there's a lot of years in between that. Sure. I, I want to make sure that I'm actually enjoying that. Which the only thing you guys are worried about is how you're going to die and when are you going to die. And like, you know, it, it's an interesting conversation because both of them kind of have like valid points. You know, you want to die honorably and, you know, have that long lasting legacy. But the way you live also adds to that legacy too. So it's like, which one is really right here? Certainly. And on that note, you know, we're leading up here to uh, what looks like Ragnar's uh, final days here. Mm -hmm. He had mentioned something about a grand, a grander plan involved here. And we never really do know what's going on in his mind and how things are going to pan out. But now we see here, he knows that there's nothing he can physically do. He can't lead people, so he may as well martyr himself here. Right. And get them to come back and take full vengeance, I guess. Yeah. So he's... He's made a plea, and he said, set my son free. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure that he tells my guys you're okay. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. And we'll take it all out on Eckbert, or, or uh, on Ayla there. So it's like, I don't know if I believe that. I think they're going to try to take it out on both. But I, think, I, I imagine it's going to start with Ayla, because Ayla's gonna, obviously going to be the one that kills him. But uh, I eventually figure after that, you know, let's just raid the race of England. Why not? It's here. Whatever forces they roll up with. Because what, whatever Ivar goes out there and says... Brienne knows the truth. He sure. knows they were betrayed. Oh, certainly. <laughs> this should be interesting. Yeah. Coming up. I think we got some squabbling about to happen. So Probably. Probably. There's one other little detail in the mention, too. He was talking about, you know, Vikings settling in England during the days of his grandson, which is actually what ends up happening. Because they, they do end up making a deal with Alfred to create the Dane Law in England. Oh. Nice little bit of history that they kind of slipped in there. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Well, then. I guess, thank you for mentioning that, because I didn't know anything about that. Mm. So, Bam, I think we're going to call it quits there. If you're brand new to this channel, I hope you guys will consider subscribing and help us grow. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications every time we drop a new one. And should you feel compelled to give us a piece of your mind, do so in the comments, guys. While you're at it, take a look at us on our socials. We're on Instagram and TikTok. See what we're up to over there. And if you want to support this channel further, consider it becoming a member by hitting that join button. But this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Skull fam, Skull Dan. Skull Joe. Later, guys.